In order to derive the equations of motion for Couet and Poisson flow, we define a coordinate system x and y, we consider a control volume, and we consider forces acting on the control volume, and because we know there is no acceleration, we can set the net force to zero, from which we find that d tau by dy is equal to dp by dx. In general, these would be partial derivatives, but because tau only varies in y, we can use the ordinary derivative, d tau by dy, and because p only varies in x, we can use the ordinary derivative, dp by dx. If mu is uniform, then we can say that the left-hand side is mu d2 vx by dy squared, where vx is the velocity in the x direction, and that's equal to dp by dx. And this is a second order ordinary differential equation, which means that the solution is of this form, vx equals 1 upon 2 mu dp by dx times y squared, plus one unknown constant b times y, plus another constant c. The constants b and c are evaluated from the boundary conditions, but we can see that the velocity profile is parabolic. So let's consider two cases of what could be called combined poisson couet flow. In the first one, the top plate moves from left to right with speed v, and there is a high pressure on the left and a low pressure on the right, and that means that the forces due to the pressure gradient are in the same direction as the motion of the top plate. We can sketch the velocity profile as follows. By the no-slip condition, the velocity at the bottom plate must be zero, and the top plate must be v. If the pressure gradient was zero, we would have couette flow, which would be a linear velocity profile from one to the other. However, because we have a high pressure on the left-hand side and a low pressure on the right-hand side, the velocity profile must bulge in a parabolic manner like this. So the key points are that this velocity profile is parabolic, and secondly, that the gradient at the bottom plate is quite steep, by which I mean that dvx by dy is large. And now let us consider the opposite case, where the top plate still moves from left to right, but this time the pressure gradient pushes in the other direction, high pressure on the right-hand side and low pressure on the left-hand side. We can sketch the velocity profile in a similar manner as before. We know that the velocity at the bottom plate must be zero, and that at the top plate must be v. We know that if there were no pressure gradient, we would have a straight line between the two, that is, couette flow. We know that the velocity profile must be parabolic, but this time, because of the direction of the pressure gradient, it must bulge in the opposite direction. So it looks something like this. So the features are, once again, that the flow is parabolic, but the other important feature is that around the bottom plate, the flow can reverse. And by this I mean that dvx by dy is negative. And one way to think of this is that the pressure gradient is trying to push the fluid backwards, while momentum diffusing downwards from the top plate is trying to push the fluid forwards. So there is a competition between the pressure gradient and momentum diffusion from the top plate. And if the pressure gradient wins, then the flow reverses, and if the momentum diffusion wins, then the flow does not reverse. And if, for example, you increase the viscosity of the fluid, then momentum diffuses more rapidly, and it can defeat higher pressure gradients. This has very important consequences for boundary layers.